Vault 106 is located inside a cavern near the eastern edge of the Capital Wasteland. Vault Tech's nefarious experiment here was testing new drug compounds by pumping them into the air filtration system. At first, the inhabitants only noticed a faint smell in the air, a feeling of euphoria, and tasting colors. But over time, this would drive the majority of them insane, resulting in them destroying the vault, killing each other, and dying attempting to escape. By the time the player arrives in 2277, the few remaining descendants of the vault dwellers all lost their minds long ago. While this was the first time the location appeared, it was mentioned many moons earlier in the fall by Bible. A section of it contains a list of different vaults that hadn't appeared yet and their true purpose, including Vault 106. Psychoactive drugs were released into the air filtration system 10 days after the door was sealed. I think it's really cool that someone at Bethesda looked through the Fault Bible for vault ideas, and it shows you how seriously they took certain elements of Fault 3's development. Though unfortunately I believe this is the only vault concept they use from it. The developers had the right intentions and an interesting idea, but in practice the location feels rushed and a bit underwhelming. Vault 106 is one of only two vaults that doesn't have a quest associated with it. Not having a quest isn't the end of the world, but it's also plagued by numerous bugs like the Vault 106 Master Key. This item is found inside the security station and is used to unlock the Overseer's office. However, there's a second key in the science labs, but the way it was placed means it can never be picked up during normal play. The only way it can be attained is by turning off collision and clipping into the wall. Another example of it being rushed is that there's no control panel for the vault door inside of the vault. If you fuck up and hit the terminal outside before entering, you can actually lock yourself inside of the vault forever, dead money style. The insane survivors have some notable oversights too. Every one of them has the exact same face, and the only difference between them is their hairstyle. They also have combat dialogue lines that were recycled from other characters, and it makes no sense for them to be saying these, considering they're supposedly insane. They actually have a unique attack line where they literally screamed at the player, but it was set up incorrectly and never plays. This line has a note that reads, Lunatic yelling an attack. They spawn randomly as male or female NPCs, but only have unique lines for male NPCs, suggesting they were all intended to be men. While traveling through the vault, the player begins to hallucinate, and there's a few scenes featuring their dad. Right after entering the vault, you come to a fork in the path, and the stairs to the right leads to one of these encounters. However, the trigger for the scene was placed so early that players will almost never see the scene as intended. If you're lucky, you might see one of the doors closing, but by increasing the player's speed, you can see how the scene was actually supposed to play out. The script that disables these dad NPCs has an amusing note that reads, Kill some fathers. The Vault 106 dad is set up to always spawn as Caucasian, and the player's race and face has no effect on his appearance, unlike the real one. Amata also appears as a hallucination, but strangely this version's hair and face are totally wrong. I'm a little confused how this happened, and I have to wonder if the real Amata's face was altered at some point, and if this doppelganger was never updated. The activator used to enable Amata's scene is named Head Explody Trigger, I guess because it's supposed to blow your mind. This is one of the rare instances where they should have marked NPCs as essential, but didn't. These phantom NPCs are coded to be disabled after being attacked, but weren't really given any other form of protection. None of these NPCs are particularly strong, and if you attack them with a single shot that's powerful enough, they can be killed, which is fucking stupid. Depending on the character in question, you'll comically receive negative or positive karma and experience points. Despite not technically existing, they also bleed, can have their limbs crippled, and even set off mines. Apparently the hallucinations don't always get disabled in some circumstances, and can even be looted after being killed, but I couldn't manage to replicate either bug. 
At the vault's lowest level in the science labs, there's a boss fight against an NPC named the Survivor. After reducing his health to 80%, hallucinations of the tunnel snakes appear and attack you. These NPCs aren't allied to the insane survivors and can be killed by them in combat. After dealing more damage, the Survivor uses a stealth boy, but at one point this fight was going to have a much more interesting phase. When the pointer first approached him, the boss was going to appear exactly like the player's dad. This version of the dad NPC is placed out of bounds, and there's still code that would have matched his face and race to the player. This was a great idea, and it's too bad they didn't get to implement it. One of these scenes warps the player to a preserved hallway. The way this scene is triggered is really confusing. Because you get warped before reaching the real hallway or even opening up the door, and are teleported into a totally different position in the fake hallway. Further, the doors in the hallucination aren't linked to the real ones, so the doors you opened will still be closed when you're moved back. The hallucination hallway is actually placed far away from the main dungeon, and is connected to a larger room that's never used in the final game. There's evidence of several cut hallucination sequences, and perhaps they had plans for another scene in this room, though it might have just been copied and pasted. Right beside this unused area, there's several out-of-bounds hallways that were going to appear suddenly in places where there were once only walls. All of this is enabled, but the activators are placed out of bounds beside the hallways so it can never happen. After appearing for a moment, they would have disappeared again before the player could reach them, and this could have been really dope. In another cutscene, the player would have walked through a hallway and been shrunk down to a scale of 0.5. For reference, the player scale is normally 1. There's code for this scene and some out-of-bounds activators that would slowly shrink the player down until they reached the halfway point, and as they made their way to the end of the hallway, they would be returned to their original size. They still work, and the scene can easily be recreated by moving the activators to an accessible area. This was cut because reducing the scale of the player below a certain point actually transforms them into a child, at least as far as the engine is concerned. This will cause your character to no longer be able to use terminals and other game-breaking bugs, so it makes sense why they left this out. The hallway where this would have taken place still remains in an unused cell called Vault 106B Hallway, and the prefix it uses reveals it was going to occur in the living quarter cell. There's some additional unused rooms connected to the hallway which might have been intended for additional hallucinations. One of the doors in this hallway leads to another unused cell, and this appears to be an early, unused version of the dorms that are found in the living quarters. Interestingly, this version has a much different layout than the one used in the final game. In another scene, the player sees a room that's upside down, but when they go to enter, they find it's a normal room. The way this sequence was achieved is pretty cool, and in the GEC you can see that both room setups are present simultaneously, but the right side up room is initially disabled. When you get close to the door, you hit a trigger that disables the ceiling objects and enables the ones on the floor, making it seem like the room was flipped. There's a unique cut helmet called the Makeshift Gas Mask that uses the Raider Blastmaster helmet as a model. The official guide states that they can be found in two places inside the Vault Science Lab, and while they are actually placed there, both instances of it are disabled, suggesting it was cut very late in development after the guide was completed. As mentioned by the guide, the Makeshift Gas Helmet was intended to stop all hallucinations in the Vault, most notably Notably, the hallucinations during the boss fight. Its unused code does stop some of the hallucinations from occurring, but only a few of them are set up to recognize that the player is wearing it, and most of them still happen even when it's equipped. It also has a notable bug that was likely the cause of it being cut. During hallucination sequences, an image space modifier is applied that gives the player's screen a blue color. Equipping this helmet applies that screen tint permanently, and this effect remains even after the helmet is removed 
removed and outside of the vault. This effect can only be removed by using console commands, and it seems they could never figure out how to fix this bug. There is also an unused enchantment effect intended for the gas mask that would have given the player plus two to their perception. The accessible items that increase the player's perception in Fallout 3 only give a plus one bonus, which would have made the makeshift gas helmet very useful outside the vault as well. There's a cut note linked to an also cut terminal that was meant to appear in the vault living quarters. It's named the Lab Technician Terminal and would have displayed the welcome text EEP Laboratory Technician Eyes Only. From there you could access the following note under the file name study number 003-C. Mycological Characteristics Kingdom Fungi Phylum Bastidiomycota Genus Eustilago Species Eustilago Lego Noslin. Hymenium type, none. Cap shape, convex. Spore color, hyper blue. Ecological type, microhyzal. Description. The Eustilago Noslin seems to produce a compound that when exposed to the conditions of the cave, are able to shield it from harmful radiation. The rate at which the fungus degrades the stone appears to be slowed. Study shows that the Eustilago Noslin reproduces by dispersing small amounts of diaspores. Due to the lack of wind sources, the fungus is usually clusters, but occasionally is able to fan out to other surfaces. Habitat slash ecology. Early speculation is that the Unoslin's above average poikilohydric characteristics allow it to survive within these caves. Unlike similar species, when dehydrated, the plant will release a toxic set of spores and die instead of entering the assumed cryobiotic state. On one hand, I can see why this was cut because it's not the most engaging note ever, but on the other, none of the notes used in game detail exactly what vault was researching, and that was a missed opportunity. Besides tripping Mega Balls, the only real reason to travel to Vault 106 is to find the science bobblehead. In the room where it's found, there are windows that show off a cave interior, but this area can never be reached during normal play. There's actually a large cave constructed around the room, complete with mushrooms, cave lights, and smoke effects. This gives the illusion of the vault being underground, and I love getting to check out inaccessible areas like this. There are aspects of the vault that I like, but overall it feels like yet another occasion where a developer had a good idea, but the publisher didn't give them time to polish it. I suspect this was still being worked on at the very end of development, and that it could have been much better with a bit more work. Thankfully, many of the bugs shown throughout this video, and many more can be fixed by the unofficial updated Fall 3 patch or Tale of Two Wastelands, and there's links to both below. These changes would have made Vault 106 into a more psychedelic and coherent location. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.